Hi everyone and welcome back. Today I felt like grabbing some tea and talking with you about five things that changed my life forever. This video was inspired by Kira Ann who recently made a video like this. So I will leave hers in the description box in case you want to watch that as well. And it got me thinking about some of the lessons and habits that I have learned that truly have been life-changing for me. So feel free to get cozy, grab yourself something nice to drink if you want, and let's dive right in. Welcome back everyone, and if you're new here, maybe you don't know who I am. My name is Vera, and I make videos about living a simpler, happier, and calmer life. So if that sounds good to you, be sure to subscribe to follow along whenever I post a new video. The first thing I want to talk about with you today is the realization I had that I don't have to be on all the time, that I have an off switch and that it is perfectly okay to use it and that I am more than what I am producing. So what I'm doing, how productive I am, basically does not define me or say anything about me or my self-worth. I learned this lesson the hard way when at 28 I had a really severe burnout and basically was out of commission for two years. And I made a whole video sharing my burnout experience, so I will leave that below as well in case you want to watch it. And while that burnout was definitely a very difficult time for me, it also taught me some valuable lessons, this being one of them. Basically, I feel we need to detach our feeling of self-worth from our productivity and view self-worth as a value instead of as a condition. So if we see our self-worth as a condition, it means that we need to do X, Y, or Z in order to feel good about ourselves. So we always need to tick a few boxes before we can feel okay with who we are and what we're doing. Versus if we see our self-worth as a value, we are starting from a place where we accept that we are 100% good enough just as we are without doing anything, without doing the things that we feel society expects of us. We're already worth self-love, confidence, growth, positivity, uh, self-compassion, forgiveness, all of that good stuff. And the actions that we do in both situations might be similar, but the feeling behind it is very different and it truly has made my life a lot better. When I say I don't need to be on all the time, I just mean redefining rest. So I now see rest and activity as two sides of the same coin and they're both equally important. You can't have one without the other. Instead of seeing activity as the good thing or productivity as the good thing and then rest as the lazy thing or the weak thing. It's just like with the different seasons to life. Sometimes we need to be active and sometimes we need to be inactive. The next mindset shift that really changed things for me is the realization that good is good enough and letting go of my perfectionism, letting go of even trying to get things like near perfect as I can get them, and also learning to reframe any limiting beliefs that I have about myself. Perfectionism is a 20-ton shield that we lug around thinking it will protect us when, in fact, it's the thing that's really preventing us from taking flight. I love this quote from Brene Brown. Earlier in my life, my perfectionism and my fear of failure really held me back from a lot of things. And I tried to do everything right and keep life under control and in order and do everything that I expected of myself. I was trying to keep myself from getting hurt and rejected when in reality what I was really doing is holding myself back from trying out all kinds of things and holding myself up to completely unrealistic standards. I remember, and this is kind of an embarrassing story, when I was a little kid, I must have been about six years old, my mom took me to a dance class for kids, or so I thought. <laughs> uh, and I was excited because I thought I was going to learn how to dance. But when we got there, it turns out that it was just basically like a kiddie disco where there was music and kids dancing and all of that stuff. And I was so disappointed because there was no one there to teach me how to do it, how to do it right and not make a fool of myself and not do it like wrong. <laughs> and I just remember sitting and sulking in a corner for an hour and no matter what my mom said to me, like 
just go out there, have fun. No one cares, like no one is watching you. You cannot make mistakes. Everything goes, no matter what she said. She could not get me to feel confident and comfortable enough to join the other kids and dance and have a good time. And I had a horrible time. Looking back on it now, I kind of feel sorry for that little girl and I want to tell her to let go of all of that stress around doing things well and not making mistakes or looking like a fool because those things are just not important in life and they're a waste of energy. And I am very grateful that through lots and lots of practice, <laughs> I have been able to let go of that perfectionism and feel a lot better about things, let go of these limiting beliefs that I had about myself. Because, for example, if I hadn't learned that lesson, I don't think that simple happy zen would have been a thing today. I've recently also taken up a new interest and it's been a lot of fun learning new things and, you know, making mistakes and just going with the flow. I do notice that my perfectionistic tendencies started to pop up again, but now I am much better at dealing with them and I don't let them stand in my way or cause me too much stress, which is great. <laughs> and I recently talked about this on a video on Patreon, so if you'd like to hear more about that in my experience, then you can join us on Patreon, patreon.com slash simplehappyzen. Walk your own path in life. Be comfortable with who you are and who you are not, also important. And don't be afraid to go against the grain and make decisions that are different from how other people around you are doing things. I'm not saying that you shouldn't do things that other people are doing, but I'm saying that you shouldn't do them just because that's how others are doing it. It is perfectly okay to make your own choices and have them be different from what others are doing if you feel that that fits you better and that that is something that you need to live a happy life. In the past, I actually went along with quite a few activities and things, even though I knew that I would be uncomfortable or that I knew I wouldn't enjoy that activity just because my friends were doing it. And that got me in quite a few situations where I really felt extremely uncomfortable and I just kept thinking, what am I doing here? Why am I here? When on the other hand, there were also quite a few moments in my life when I knew I wanted to do things differently than what others were doing and I did it anyway. And it brought me so many wonderful positive things like taking a gap year in between high school and college where I worked and traveled and had all kinds of amazing experiences or following my intuition and arranging my own place to do my six month internship when I was in college instead of signing up for the school plan that they had or choosing not to get my driver's license at 18 like everyone else because I thought that it just would not have enough benefits for me to actually go ahead and do that. I've really learned that life truly becomes a lot easier and more fun and more enjoyable when you are comfortable with who you are and who you are not and when you align the things you do to those ideas. And while we might fear that choosing to walk our own path and making our own decisions might lead to others rejecting us or things like that, I've never really experienced that to be the case. And even if it does happen, it probably means that this person wasn't really meant to be a large part of your life anyway. The fourth thing really has to do with minimalism and intentional living, but I've also noticed that it goes so much further than the things that we consciously see in life, and that is the realization that marketing is everywhere. I clearly remember being in a car one day in the passenger seat because I don't drive, <laughs> and looking around and suddenly having the realization that, man, everywhere I look, everywhere I go everything I see, they all want something from me. They all want my money or my time or my attention or all three. <laughs> and I remember that little realization kind of shook me up a little bit in that moment because we learn to block a lot of the things that we see. But when you go outside and you really look around, it's crazy how many things are advertised to us. And I'm not saying that marketing is evil or that we're all doomed or anything, but it does help to realize this so that you can start taking charge again and being more intentional with your attention, time and money. 
This realization helped me to have it more clear for myself which things I want to allow to let in and which things I basically want to shut out and ignore as much as possible. For example, any advertising for beauty products, I try to ignore it and it goes straight into the ignore and discard pile of my brain. I don't want to give it even a minute of my time or attention because I know which products I like, I know what works for me and I'm not open to any suggestions for anything else. And that's just one example, but you can do this with all kinds of things. It's also the reason why I never keep my phone on me whenever I'm at home. I always put it in our little phone tray on that dresser because even our phones want something from us. They are programmed to want our attention and to actively do things to try and get it. So uh, turn off your notifications <laughs> and don't keep your phone on you all day. Creating moments of silence where I'm not doing anything, where I'm not listening to anything used to be very challenging for me and now I can't live without it. Silence is so powerful, it's so important, and even having just one or two minutes of stillness, uh, it's a must for me now. There is so much to learn in silence. It gives us an opportunity for self-reflection and for tuning in and see what's going on, kind of like coming home to ourselves, or I just let my mind do its thing and daydream, which is very healthy, and eventually it'll help to kind of turn down all of that inner noise. It also helps me to be more aware of what's going on, both outside as well as inside. And just having a moment of stillness now, for me, it's very similar to that feeling of when you're really thirsty and you're drinking a glass of water. It's like instant magic. We also live in a time where it's very easy to get into that state of overconsumption of content and media. And I realize the irony of me talking to you about this online through YouTube, but it is our reality. Content and media are everywhere, and we know now that overconsumption of these things can have serious effects on our mental and emotional health. Sometimes I feel like the more voices I hear in a day, the more my own mind also will not stop chatting. <laughs> and I find myself constantly ruminating about things or not being able to mentally wind down. So we need to incorporate some moments in our day without any of those voices, without that input where we're not listening to something or reading something or watching something, but we're just being with ourselves in stillness for a few minutes in the moment. I would love to know your thoughts about the things that I discussed in the video. If you have any input, please share that. And if you have any examples of your own, of things that really have been life-changing for you, definitely share that in the comments as well. If you wanna follow along with me, then you can follow me on Twitter. You can subscribe for my free newsletter. You can follow me on Patreon. I share two extra videos a month over there and some kind of like behind the scenes things of my life. And we have a really lovely community there. And I also have a decluttering ebook and two online courses that you can check out. So I'll leave all the links for you in the description box. If you want more right here, I have 10 simple habits to improve your life. And right here, I have a self-care chat about goal setting. As always, questions, comments, conversations down below. Have a lovely day. Thank you for being here and I will see you again soon. Bye bye.